For those of you who have not attended some of our online resources and educational webinars, this one's kind of different. We're very excited about this because this is kind of a debut performance for a brand new initiative, what we call the Parklet program. So we are very excited about that. And giving it so much pomp and circumstance, I know at Unilock we compiled the best and brightest for panelists here. And let me take a chance to introduce my colleagues. Uh, we have Mike Anderson. He is the commercial sales manager for Unilock Midwest. Um, with me, as always, is Mr. Brad Swanson. He's the commercial director, uh, or the director of commercial sales. Augie Rodriguez, director of technical services. We have lots of directors with us today. And of course, we have Bruce Walter. He is the MVP of our contractor services. So you can see we've amassed quite a team here for today. Uh, first of all, before we get started, I'd like to go over the format. Um, and again, for those of you who have not attended any of our online courses, uh, we like to keep this very informal. And when I say informal, I mean a lot of good exchange, questions, answers, because that really enhances the rhythm of the meeting. And if you scroll down to your bottom bar, you'll see a Q&A section. If something comes up and you want to you know, present a question, please type it in and I will do my best to get this presented. We're going to have all the questions answered, okay? Um, ordinarily, we get everything done in a nice, timely fashion. You know, the, the meeting is scheduled for an hour. We certainly don't want to keep you. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by during the middle of the day. So we definitely want to get as much good content delivered to you in a timely fashion as possible. Okay, so type in your questions, we will get them answered. If for some strange reason we're inundated with questions, we can't get to it in the allotted time, we're gonna send you out an email, probably tomorrow, addressing every question you may have. Uh, another note is that this session is being recorded. We have your email information, so please, if any colleagues of yours were unable to attend, we can certainly send you the video recording of this. Okay, let's get things started. Uh, obviously, at Unilock, we pride ourselves in being a leader within the industry. Uh, and I think that's a responsibility we take very, very seriously. But you know what? That extends far beyond just the products themselves. I think it's the initiatives and the programs that make it that much more sustainable. And that's the importance of what this Parklet initiative is all about. Uh, I think we can all agree we've certainly drifted into some uncharted waters at this time. And when everything around us tends to get turned sideways, it really is that creativity, that thinking outside the box, that's what helps create opportunity. And I think you're gonna get a good glimpse of that today. So without further ado, I'd like to present our first panelist. Um, he will be giving a good comprehensive overview of the Parklet program. Um, he will be discussing you know, how it actually came about, the initiatives, what our intent is, and how this actually works into the multitude of scenarios that we kind of foresee going forward. So, Mike Anderson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Brian, and, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, as Brian said, my name is Mike Anderson, uh, Commercial Sales Manager with Unilock. And just to provide a little bit of context for those that might not be familiar, um, Unilock, as Brian said, we are an industry leading manufacturer and we manufacture segmental block pavers and retaining walls. And for today's purposes, we're gonna focus more on large format slabs and modular vertical elements. So as Brian mentioned, we do pride ourselves on the technological advancements. And this involves uh, evolving with the needs of our current customers. So bringing that to today's subject of Parklets is what we're going to kind of focus on today. So I wanted to start off really quick by just kind of defining what is a parklet, or maybe you've heard it referred to as a people spot or, or other term. Essentially, a parklet is nothing more than a raised architectural platform, which extends the sidewalk to provide more space and additional amenities. So if we looked at why and, and how these systems are used today, they're literally nothing more than trying to create additional space for places like restaurants, bars, coffee shops, et cetera. We're all in the same environment today with the new COVID era of trying to maximize this additional space and increase capacity for these businesses uh, who are kind of forced to look at outdoor options in today's market. 
So it is my opinion, but I really do believe that these parklets will likely become a commonplace long after the extreme efforts to reduce the COVID have passed. Just think of the alfresco dining concept and the way that restaurants are continually trying to offer additional space um, in, in, our, in our current markets. All right, so I wanted to hit on a few of the advantages really quick to see why these, these spaces make sense. First of all, they are removable and reusable. They're very easy for seasonal use to put them up and take them down and use them year after year. These are also flexible with interchangeable features such as paving slabs, pillars, and planters. Another advantage is these are low installation and maintenance costs. Really, they're probably maintenance free. They do not require skilled labor, and you could even build them without a single cut being made to any of the materials. Also, they're very easily stored. They are stackable. If you look at the way that these paving slabs come on pallets. They're already in stack uh, configurations. And so you can easily reduce the footprint of this module uh, when they are being stored. Another benefit is that these systems do not impede on stormwater. So the water will very freely flow below the paving surface, utilizing the existing pitch and grade of your parking lot, reaching the inlets or catch basins as they normally would. One of the other main benefits is that these systems are modular and they are scalable. So you can easily incorporate them into a single parking stall, multiple parking stalls, or really any configuration that you might have that you're looking to design an outdoor space for. And finally, one of the biggest questions that come up, and we'll likely dive deeper into this in a moment, but if you were to look at the cost and what these systems uh, can range, when we're talking about the slabs and the pedestals for the platform alone, typically we can see numbers anywhere from seven to $16 per square foot. So there is a variety of options available. So now that we have a little bit of an overview and we know what these systems are and where they are used, I wanted to turn it back over to Brian for any questions you might have. And we're gonna follow with a lot more further detailed information from our other panelists. Okay, Mike, thank you very much. As a matter of fact, we do have a couple of questions I want to throw at you right away before I pass that baton over to Mr. Swanson. First of all, uh, one of the questions that came through, we're talking about heights and limitations. Are there limitations with heights or slopes of the platform? That's a great question, and I'd be more than happy to address it. So the way that the paving slabs are set on pedestals we really have almost unlimited applications for what we're gonna find. Uh, these are the same systems that are used on roof deck applications. So we can do anything from little stackable eighth inch tall pedestals all the way up to three foot tall uh, with cross braces. So really, yes, you will be able to find any uh, type of elevation or grade change uh, work with this type of system. Great question. And and that is, we had a similar question talking about the heights, and I think that answered Doug's as well. We, you know, Doug referenced a height of about one inch to one and a half. Can it be elevated? And I think Mike, obviously, absolutely. Said, you know, with these pedestals, absolutely. It's it's a concept that we've used on on roof decks for quite some time, so we're very well versed as far as you know the functional side of it and how high and low you can really go with this. Uh, okay. Um, one more question for you, Mike, before we get on to Brad. Um, they talk about, well, this is the, there's a question for the Yukara cabinets. We're going to save that one for Augie's presentation. Augie's going to discuss the vertical elements on that, so we're going to shelve that one for the time being. Um, we will get to that when Augie presents, but now I'd like to uh, bring Mr. Brad Swanson on the stage. Brad's going to discuss not only the components, but the technology used for the products that we're implementing with these, with these parklet uh, programs. And he's also going to kind of touch on some of the pedestal applications because there's a lot of nuance that goes into that. So, Brad, take it away. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks, Mike, for going over the parklets. And uh, I first want to kind of step, take a step back here and look at uh, 
how the parklets fit into existing corridors and streetscapes. So uh, I put together this presentation kind of based on another presentation that kind of goes over full streetscapes and stuff. But you can see here in this photo, this is a, a complete building to building enhancement of this corridor that really makes this space a shared street and, and completely friendly to pedestrians when they need it to be. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So with COVID-19, it's really presented some unique challenges with social, social distancing requirements. It's limited the full use of gathering spaces, especially in restaurant and bar industry areas. So this really is an opportunity to look for using existing space within that public right-of-way corridor for new social activities. So we're, we're trying to transitions from vehicular areas or otherwise unused pedestrian areas or uh, landscape areas into these other spaces. So there's a few different things you can look at besides the, the, um, the parklets. And I just kind of want to show you some examples here. Um, you know, minimizing the available uh, parkway right away uh, or maximizing the available parkway right away, expanding that corridor. You can do that with the parklets and the parallel parking spaces. You can do that with bump outs uh, where you extend the curb into the drive areas. That also acts as traffic calming. Um, you can do temporary or permanent street closures. And then also you could maybe overflow into adjacent parking lots for increasing that capacity for uh, restaurant spaces. And we're seeing some of that in the city of Chicago right now where they're closing off streets and parking lots. So this would be your typical, um, maybe a little bit more than typical uh, uh, streetscape where you have some, um, you know, enhancements between the sidewalk and the building as well as the, the parkway from the back of curb to the sidewalk area. And this could all be expanded into outdoor seating areas for uh, businesses. Uh, this is a project in Elmwood Park, Illinois, using uh, Richcliffe pavers. Here's a bump out area. This is off of Devon in the city of Chicago where they have these little areas where the curb actually extends into the, into the drive lanes a little bit further and creates this mini little seating area. Now again, this could be transformed into some sort of uh, you know, restaurant tables and chairs or outdoor cafe areas for uh, this area. Uh, this would be a, a more extreme example. This is downtown Evanston where they transformed their fountain square into a giant plaza area. And this view here you're seeing used to be all landscape area. This used to be all plant material, no plaza. Uh, there was a sidewalk connecting the two uh, uh, areas. But all this stuff on the right hand side there is all brand new, um, which is a great enhancement. Here's another a project where they took a, a street in the village of Bloomingdale and they actually close this off and transform this into a people space. And this is a really great before and after of how they're trying to create more public space for this facility or for this area. You can see the buildings on the right have outdoor seating already. Now this could be expanded into this plaza area. They have some removable bollards there at the front, uh, right next to the sidewalk that they can pull out. So if they had to get emergency vehicles in there, they could. But as a daily activity, this is more of a plaza area than it is a, a roadway. A couple of reviews here. This uses uh, Thornberry and Eco Priora permeable pavers. So this is actually a permeable plaza now. And this is another example of uh, Argyle Shared Street in the city of Chicago, where it used to be an asphalt uh, you know, drive area with a six inch B612 curb and gutter. And they transform that into a shared street using all pavers and the drive areas with a flush curb. And so all your parallel parking is completely flush with the adjacent uh, sidewalk areas, uh, which actually are perennial pavers as well. And this makes it more of a, a people friendly space, especially for activities pre-COVID like this, where they had an outdoor farmer's market. So it doesn't feel like a street, it feels like a, a plaza area or an outdoor corridor. But those are very expensive things to do. So as a temporary solution to get things moving faster for, for businesses in your area, you can look at these people spots or AKA parklet areas, which uh, Mike went over. 
And essentially, when you're doing these things, really there's a critical thing to consider, and that's the health, safety, and welfare, but also the accessibility. Um, really, when we look at accessibility, you want to make sure it's firm, it's stable, it's slip resistant, and smooth and level. So you can easily transition from the sidewalk areas onto these parklet areas. So that's a really key consideration you need to make sure. And these parklets with the pedestals and the slabs really allow for that. Um, you know, when you also talk about accessibility, it really means having the same access be the same path of travel. So if you had a curb there where somebody had to go from the restaurant down to another seating area and they had to go out and around in the traffic, that would be less safe and considerably not uh, considerably dangerous. Um, so when you have these temporary people spaces such as parklets, accessibility is really a key factor. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the slabs just because it is a key component of the system. You know, not all concrete slabs are considered apples to apples. There's multiple finish options that can do different things. There's also different colors and textures and things like that. Um, and some products even have coatings or stain resistant surfaces that come from the factory. So there's no need to seal from year to year. It's gonna help prevent when people drop uh, you know, food on the floor or they spill wine. You can easily clean that up with some of these coated products. Um, there's different types that we make. There's the classic and then there's the Endura color. You can see in this photo here that the classic are some of our, our pairs you may have had used in your 1980 streetscape that look a little faded or worn out. The Endura color pavers are newer technology that's going to really resist any kind of fading over time. You can tell just by this photo the difference in the quality of the surface. Much denser, it's only a sand cement surface. So that top 12% or about one centimeter is all sand cement and allows us to use a larger aggregate in the base so you get good strength for these slabs that are going to be set up on top of the pedestals. Good flexural strength so they won't break as well as good color fastness on the surface from that uh, face mix technology. And these are both done on the, the wet side, so it's gonna cure together. There's no chance of like delaminating or the face popping off. It's a very durable system with you know, your PSIs, pounds per square inch, nine, 10,000 minimum for some of these products. So very, very durable. Um, within that, face mix and Duracolor technology, there's multiple options, not just for slabs, but for also pavers on grade. So this is a key thing to consider, again, when you're looking at uh, products. So I just want to mention two products specifically because they, they work well with these parklets and we've used them a lot on lift decks that are on pedestals, so we know that they're going to perform very well for your type of applications. Arcana is really the premier uh, uh, two by two slab out there. We do make it in other sizes. I say two by two, that's the most efficient size for pedestals uh, because it will span that two feet by two feet grid. If you go to these smaller sizes, you're gonna have more pedestals, which will drive up costs a little bit. Uh, again, some of the features, it is an Endura color. It has a blasted finish, I mean, it's, it's sandblasted, so it has a nice uh, decorative uh, textured surface to it, which makes it good slip resistance. And it also is coated. So we coat this in our factory, it cures on the product, so it's always going to be there. These weigh about 23 pounds per square foot, uh, and we do stock it in four colors. Uh, this is a view of a project uh, right on Lakeshore Drive where they've used this Lugano color. The trade price generally is right around 785, depending on quantity. We can look at uh, a pricing for larger applications. You can kind of see that the surface there is, is pitted. That's the sand uh, or the blasting uh, texture on the surface. It also has a granite chip in there, so you actually see a nice little sparkle to it in the sunlight. Again, it's been used around pool decks because it is slip resistant, so you don't have to worry about slip and fall. Um, we've seen it extensively on a lot of the big city uh, projects, some of these multi-million dollar high rises. Then there's also a, a more economical paver called uh, Skyline Premier. This is also two by two, same size as the Arcana. Uh, both of these are two inches thick. This also has a general color finish, but there's no coating on it. And it's also not sandblasted. So the trade price is a little bit less at, at 536 a square foot. But again, it's been used at uh, corporate headquarters for their outdoor plaza areas, 
around pool decks, again, because it's slip resistant. And it's also been used in restaurant areas or outdoor areas. Now this is an elevated pedestal system at a country club and they uh, uh, you know, have a blended color out here. So if they do spill food on it, you're not gonna notice it. It is coated as well. So this can be um, cleaned off fairly easy. Now I just wanna touch on, on pedestals real br briefly. This is uh, a project going in on a roof that uh, kind of horrified me when I was up there because I was afraid that these slabs are gonna blow off the roof, but uh, uh, they didn't have any issues here. You can see these are set up on pedestals about three or four inches. Now this height can range, you know, anywhere from about two and an eighth of an inch up to, I'm sorry, the pedestal height can range from an eighth of an inch up to 40 inches. And, um, you know, you add two inches of that for the thickness of the paver. The nice thing, these are adjustable. They have a slope compensator on that anywhere from, uh, you know, zero to five degree, or 5%, I'm sorry. So you can accommodate easily the crown of the road for a lot of these. They're lightweight, so they make it easy to store. You pick them up, put them in a box versus some sort of, uh, you know, wood structure that you have to uh, throw away each year and really can make it easy for storage. Uh, here's an example of kind of what a cross section could look like, you know, on a roadway. If the curb was on the, the right-hand side of your screen here, you have a little bit taller uh, pedestal, and as you go up towards the crown of the road, those pedestals will get a little bit shorter. So you can go from, you know, uh, a couple inches up to uh, uh, two and an eighth of an inch all the way up to you know, however high you need to go. Now, there's different products out there. We do sell both uh, concrete, natural stone, and porcelain tile. We can also arrange for, for wood decking when necessary. But as you look at the prices, you actually see that concrete is one of the most economical options out there for doing these parklets. Um, and when we start to look at you know, budget numbers for the different system costs, I put these numbers together here just so you can think about this. Now this is based on an eight, in, uh, eight foot wide by 20 foot long parking spot. That's your typical parking spot, nine by 20 or so. Uh, we wanna use eight feet of that for the slabs. That gets you four slabs across by um, nine deep or nine long. Uh, generally, that's going to run you anywhere from 2,200 to 2,900 per space for both material and labor. So, figure out how many spaces you want to use up, multiply it by that number, and that'll get you the approximate cost. A lot cheaper than doing the entire streetscape and immediately gets you additional seating areas for restaurants and bars. Now, the skyline, as I mentioned, is a little bit more economical. That's going to be closer to $2,000 uh, per space, um, you know, $13 to $17 per square foot. So those are some good budget numbers to consider. And so if you look at the kind of revenue you might generate or business might generate from per parking space, let's say you have two tables with four people per table, the average about $60 for a bill. So that's about $120 per table. If you have six operating hours, maybe two for lunch hour, four in the evening. You can generate between you know seven eight hundred dollars per day, um, and let's if you look at it over a month. Let's say you have four days a week that are really your prime days, Thursday through Sunday. You may generate ten to fourteen thousand dollars total revenue per parking space. So if you multiply that by ten spaces, you can see where that money will go and actually help out for things like that. So that's a that's a good way to look at it in terms of how you, you know, finance these different uh, parklet uh, projects. Well, the other thing you gotta keep in mind is that the recommended guidelines for outdoor table seating is about six feet. To put this in kind of a graphic format here, uh, we're looking at these two tables. This is one parking spot. I apologize for how crude this looks, just a quick example here. But these are two four top tables, about three and a half, four feet wide. And we've set them six feet apart. And the little ring there shows you the, the kind of the area, the zone for, you know, the six foot recommended guidelines by the CDC for spacing. Um, that's all I really had. There are additional materials and we want to talk about that, but for time, I think we'll hand it back to Brian. Thank you very much, Brad. And we did have a question too regarding the heights. Uh, Brad, I think we're going to get ahead of ourselves if I ask you this because Bruce is going to cover working with those pedestals. But that was a great presentation showing just how universal this really can be. Uh, I know we had a few questions regarding heights and the adjustability of that. Uh, 
I think you're going to see after Bruce's presentation, it is the learning curve is very soft here. Okay. And that's what we're trying to convey. There's a certain universality to the whole Parklet program, but the ease with which a lot of the public works employees and a lot of the other village employees can actually adapt to this quick. It is very, very quick and efficient. Okay. Thank you very much, Brad. Um, our next presenter is going to be Bruce Walter. Bruce is going to discuss the pedestal application and some of the nuance in working with pedestals. Before we get started with Bruce, Brian, I'm going to quickly just, obviously everyone is aware that uh, Bruce and I trying to keep as far away as possible. Uh, we are outside uh, in our parking lot here at UTech. And, uh, you know, we are on a uh, parklet that we kind of put up uh, for this webinar just so everyone can kind of see. Again, we got our table here. I got my hydration, Bruce has nothing, but again, uh, just to kind of show everyone, we are outside on our parklet here. We're, we're spanning basically two of those stalls, uh, more of the per perpendicular stalls. Uh, but really quickly, we didn't realize or know what the weather was gonna be like, so we did pre-record uh, a couple of videos for, for everyone, uh, just to make sure we, we weren't rained out. So I'll play the first one, and then we'll go live to Bruce and kind of do a little discussion afterwards uh, more related towards that install as well. So uh, bear with me as I load up the video and uh, share that with you guys. Hey, Arg, I'm not uh, Arg, catching no. the audio. Yeah. All right. Let me start that over again. Sorry, guys. Thank you for letting me know. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. Pacific uh, installation took two men, approximately five hours. Hello. Hello and welcome, I'm Bruce Walter with Unilock Midwest. Um, today we want to discuss with you parklet installations and I'm standing on top of one that we've done here outside of our UTech training center here in Aurora, Illinois. Uh, this specific uh, installation took two men, approximately five hours. Uh, so it's not a real time investment, labor intensive type installation technique. Uh, there's a couple of things that are really kind of important to help you along with minimizing labor investment when it comes to building this. Uh, first off is full size pieces of stone. So here with the Arcana product line, which has the easy clean material as the coating uh, to resist any kind of stains and things like that. Uh, relative ease of maintenance for any type of food application over it. A couple other things you're going to notice here. Augie will talk to you a little bit about the cabinets and what we've done is create full cavities here to import those cabinets into, all right? But specifically, let's get started here, all right? Usually, normally, you're going to do begin your installation at curbside, all right? This is a specific installation I'll touch on in a little bit because we've set all the pedestals to a six inch height which potentially could be your curb line all right off of the uh, street uh, sidewalk area but a couple of things that are important is if you have a concrete that has a larger radius oftentimes potentially you may need to back cut that first course so here i've done a little back cut even though it's not specifically necessary to this tight of a radius on that curb, but potentially that might be hopefully the only cuts you might have to make on your install. So I'll slide that big back into place. Now, that being said, you wanna take that first course straight all the way across your area of installation, all right? So start basically here at curb. Maintain that flush elevation like you would see here, and that's done by our pedestals. Let's discuss a little bit about the pedestal installation. So here, we're standing on top of an area that's got about 3% pitch away from curb, and that's a little unusual, I, I understand that. Uh, here, we're on top of a permeable lot. Most installations are gonna be outside center crown on your uh, street, heading down towards curb. 
but you definitely want to have that curb still as your flush point. So here we've got a series of pedestals that are lined up and oftentimes you'll see guys different ways to do it. Some guys prefer to use a larger level and lay that across a few pedestals, all right, for an alignment. What I like to do, the technique I like is here using a two foot level. So we're using two by two slabs and that's the dimension of this two foot level. Recognize the fact that if I'm sliding this pedestal either up or down, I'm changing that elevation, all right? So I think it's important that you read basically this pedestal here and your next piece that you're going to install off of a two foot level. This way, again, I, I know that I'm in alignment. So here I've set this one. Um, you're gonna notice we've got a slope adjuster here on each top of these pedestals. There's gonna be an arrow, all right, that's going to be the percentage of slope that you're going to attain. So here we're already at 3%. Further up, I was at 2%. So I've got slope that's gradually changing on this installation. Anyways, we set that one up, we level this pedestal, clockwise basically raises that pedestal installation, all right. Over here, I've got the third one. What I would do now is I would have that slab come in, set on that, rotate that slab down, apply a little bit of pressure with the second man here, who's working the pedestal, land it into this point here, and then elevate my pedestal here. So again, I would take this red arrow, hit 3% on my pitch. That snaps down. This is a tight eighth inch disc spacer that would set. Also has a, an arrow pointing towards slope. So basically raising that in the direction of upslope, which is in that direction on these installs. So that gives me that incline that you want to see at 3% on top of this pedestal. Larger pedestal installations might require an elevated um, pedestal itself and you might want to do the slope adjustment on the bottom but typically on a normal commercial application off of curb you won't need to attain that you can do slope correction if you need to here on top all right so that's certainly one way to maintain a level surface for tables and chairs to be on if you incur an installation where there's not a lot of slope then potentially you could do what we did over here on our installation and we just set all of the same pedestals these are the vjf threes all right with the two inch slab on it so we set basically this elevation here throughout at six inches all right so i recognize the fact if you've got that installation with low slope all right this might be something that's a lot easier to install in this direction rather than leveling course by course away so that's it. Thanks for your time. All right, guys, really quickly here, just wanted to do a quick segue over to Bruce, and that way Bruce can kind of give you a quick little segue uh, into, his, uh, into his installation there. Thanks, Augie. I think, uh, again, the key it, um, condition here is really ease of installation. I, I think that, uh, not knowing a lot of resources available um, to you guys in the commercial arena, uh, but a lot of public works crews have uh, some personnel with some hardscape capabilities that could easily put this in. Again, very little cutting, potentially maybe that first course along curb uh, to back cut that, to tighten up and eliminate any kind of liability issues there as your slab would contact curb few cuts that we did in the cabinet system for the rails, but basically, again, our alignment here on this was all off of full slabs. So if you can work with two foot increments, uh, which I, I think a lot of times you have the flexibility to do so, you can do that. Now the cabinets that Augie will talk about here in a little bit, those are nice and you're gonna notice that what we've done is attach a rail system through the cabinet by simply using two by sixes. So every course of view car on the cabinet system is a six inch course. So basically in one panel, we're cutting out that inch and a half to two inches out of that to receive that rail system. So 
real easy kind of installation technique to be able to achieve full dis full closure in your surrounding area. So gives a little bit of contrast and a little bit of interest too. You can do here, we're going with more warmer earth tone colors and our browns and tans. But certainly if you look at Yukara as well as Arcana, you can get into contemporary looks as well. Uh, we've got the pillar over here with the cap on it. Now that could be, again, installed here as a platform for serving trays and things like that, or a gathering place. Um, so these cabinets, though we have it behind me as a planter, certainly versatile and other features as well. One of the things that we didn't get to, we have a pillar cap available that, uh, that has a cord hold in it for banners and things like that as well. So if you really want to kind of draw interest in specifically this area, you certainly can do that. And also allow pedestrians and other traffic going by uh, identify that liability issue to hopefully slow traffic. All right. If there are any other questions, we'll, uh, we'll, keep, moving. we'll keep moving along. Brian, are Bruce, we seeing any questions? Yeah, well, you know what? No, we've addressed all that, and we're really we're right on time. We're up to speed. I just want to say, Bruce, great job on that. And I hope you're all getting the fact that, you know, those pedestals, sometimes, you know, it looks a little confusing, but they're very easy to work with. And the beauty of the adjustability factor is year after year, even if the street has additional movement there, those heights can be readjusted, all right? So you create a template with all the, all the pedestals you use, you mark them, you set them aside, store them away for the winter. If you have extra movement, let's adjust another degree or another inch and a half. That's the universal aspect of this. This is what makes it so user-friendly. Um, okay, great job, Bruce. So having said that now, we're coming into the home stretch. Um, I told you I'd get you out of here before three o'clock. Now it's the vertical element. Augie Rodriguez has been just an integral part of the Yukara system. Uh, and I think this is what really, this is the component that shines within the whole parklet system. So Augie, dazzle us. Oh, thanks, Brian. Uh, that's a little too much credit, but no, it, it, in, in reality, it really is something that, um, you know, it's almost a perfect fit for what we're trying to do, both here in this parklet type of uh, installation, um, both functional and aesthetically uh, pleasing in, in a couple of different ways. But also, you know, let's not forget uh, that a lot of what we're showing you guys here versus, you know, whether it's a, a 24 inch slab, a pedestal system, or these vertical features, everything here is transferable to different parts of the streetscape, almost kind of like Brad showed in the beginning. And one of the things that I've gotten a chance to work on where it really makes a ton of sense uh, is if we go onto an elevated or amenity deck on uh, roof decks, you know, that's something that with the uh, addition of these Yukara cabinets that I'll kind of go into, uh, you know, the ability to take some of these vertical features uh, onto a roof deck or a elevated area because of the minimal weight factor is I think also key into the integration into the, the parklet uh, type of uh, feature here. So same thing, I'll kind of lead in with a video that we shot just in case we had inclement weather and I'll start with that. And then right afterwards, we'll do a quick PowerPoint uh, to show some of the other uh, functions and some of the more common questions we get with the system since it is a uh, new for the year. So bear with me here while I load my video. I'll make sure the sound works guys. And here we go. Okay, let's spend a few minutes and talk about vertical features and how we can integrate them into your design and into the space, uh, whether it's a one parklet uh, area or multiple uh, span together. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind when you think about this is more so the standard way or the traditional way of building a wall, which is taking a block, stacking them together, using a little bit of adhesive, and now we're building and stacking and gluing together. Now the problem there becomes that a, it's cumbersome, time consuming, uh, something that you have to have a little bit of uh, know how, how to do, but more importantly, it's uh, permanent. And that's something that we can take down, uh, easily store, and bring back out. Um, so one thing we want to introduce uh, with this system and with this, uh, with these parklets, is a new uh, modular cabinet system that we came out with for 2020, uh, the Yukara modular cabinets. And what that is, is they're very tight, uh, packaged, lightweight uh, structures that are very easy to put together, uh, but the beauty of it is they can be taken down and put back up in multiple uh, multiple times uh, throughout this course of a year. This uh, unit right here is how it comes packaged. This is a pillar unit. 
Uh, this is something that I'll show you uh, quickly here in a minute, but something that can be very easily put up into this structure, uh, again, within minutes uh, of uh, uh, assembling it. Now you can kind of see here, that's how it comes packaged. When you unwrap everything, um, you can kind of see here, everything's put together for you. Everything's already welded together. All the double hanging rails are put in place. The only thing that you do to put these together is you put a bolt in every corner of the unit tighten it up with a wrench and so with these two things your bolt and your wrench you can basically put this unit together in a matter of minutes uh, I'll kind of show you one put together right here and again I do work out almost every day so this may look very easy uh, but it actually is aluminum so they're 100% aluminum structures uh, again they're gonna weather beautifully outside uh, no rust uh, factor uh, no issues with them being let, left outside in the rain, sun, uh, what have you. And so the beauty is going to be the ability to take these and move them around, store them, and uh, put them up and down as you see fit. Again, once I do and take one screw in either corner, eight screws total, tighten those bolts. Now I take our Ucara panels, which uh, you have already seen, and depending on what um, finish, what color, what size I want, you can start hanging these units like you see here. And these units, again, without making any cuts, I can start hanging one by one, clad this whole unit just like this. Again, something that is very easy to do. Kind of straighten these out, and now you see here, I repeat that process all the way down. Once I do that, I'll walk right over here and you see here's a unit put together. Um, the unit is 42 inches tall and once all the panels are put in place is a nominal 24 inches all the way around, uh, which means it can fit into one of these 24 by 24 slab spots. Uh, so I can actually incorporate this within the guidelines of those parking stalls and keep this all flush with my two by two platform. Or if you have a little bit more room, you can actually move it outside just like we did here. The other thing you'll notice is I'll move this kind of plane here. They can be used for different options. Uh, they can be integrated into the actual structure uh, to be used uh, functionally or more decoratively, whatever the uh, design calls for. Uh, other thing that I want to show here is we use these uh, two by sixes to form a little fence between this unit and our bar unit right on the other side there. Again, very easy to do with a couple of quick cuts. Uh, you can kind of wall yourself out um, within that park parklet area and be able to easily delineate your spaces from others. Um, like I mentioned earlier, if you walk right over here, you'll see that this is a half put together unit. Um, and you'll see that it's the same process as you saw in that pillar. I'm gonna take my screw, one in every corner, eight total. Once I do that, the structure is completely put together. So once I can have that uh, structure up, again, I start hanging my panels just like you see here, just like I did on the pillar, and the unit is completely done. Uh, a couple of things that always come up is the weight of these units. Uh, once I have this cladded to the top, uh, with my actual frame, you're at about 1,500 pounds. So again, some good weight there. Uh, the other option uh, to use these more as a barrier is to have uh, whatever is on hand, and a lot of municipalities have sandbags that are usable, to fill this up with some sandbags, and now you have added some nice weight, create a nice barrier from your street side to your dining side and pedestrian areas. So again, very functional, but aesthetically pleasing. Um, if you kind of walk back here, you'll see this is the unit, I'll move this out of the way here, and you'll see this is a finished unit Again, cladded from the bottom to the top. We've added some uh, plants here and made it more of a versatile functional planter. Uh, but again, this could be used as a bar. It could be uh, something that you can put a grill into. We have a grill unit that can uh, easily accommodate a grill up to 42 inches. Um, you know, the restaurants, restaurant tours, the businesses can use them both as barriers and structural uh, pieces, but also integrate them into the design and make them functional. Um, 
So again, a very, uh, very unique feature, uh, lightweight, something that can be used uh, in a multiple of ways. We can connect them. You can have them spread across to save a little bit on the cost. Uh, so again, more, uh, more leeway there from the design standpoint. Uh, something that if you have further questions, definitely reach out to your uh, territory manager. We'd be more than happy to help you out with any questions. All right. So that was a quick little tidbit just so that everyone can kind of see, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of uh, the attendees maybe haven't seen these uh, systems yet. It's, it's something fairly new. Um, but again, something that we're very uh, uh, excited about that uh, could fit the system uh, very well, depending on the configuration. Again, it's something that is very easily put together, like you guys saw in the video. Um, but again, we can kind of conform it to whatever the design calls for. Um, one of the things is uh, always uh, comes up as well is kind of the how the two systems complement each other when we're talking about the actual frame, the aluminum frame with the UCAR panel. So I'm going to quickly jump over to a PowerPoint. So I'll share my screen again to kind of go into that component. I got a couple of slides that will kind of talk about that and, and give us some talking points. And if you see here, uh, the reason we can kind of uh, hang and have some unique looks on these cabinets is there is a double rail system on the cabinets that hook in uh, to the back of these fascia panels. You'll see there is a rail at the top or a channel at the top and bottom that basically just hang nicely on those structures once you put them up. Uh, kind of Brad Swanson already talked a little bit about the technology side, so I'm not gonna hammer this home too much, but the ability for us to create uh, different colors, different textures is there. Uh, again, kind of opening up the design uh, from a design standpoint on a uh, system that traditionally hasn't been uh, that open to color and textures. And most walls are pretty uh, standard, monolithic, uh, monochromatic type of, of option. So this is kind of opens up that avenue. And so once you marry that up with this UCARA modular system, you'll see here in the picture that is an L-shape uh, configuration uh, with a grill and a backsplash. And if I go down to the next slide here, you'll see that this unit is basically four panels that you put together on each one. And once those are all connected, I have my frame uh, put up and we'll kind of show you a top-down view that allows a lot of usable space on the inside. Now, whether that is to create a weight factor and put sandbags in there, whether that is storage for the business, um, whatever that may be, there is a function and a lot of usable space on the inside of these units. Um, the hey, Aug, as long as you're discussing, can, can you hear me? As long as you're discussing the units, because this question came across, I thought mm -hmm. it's the opportune time. Sure. What are the sizes of those UCARA modular units for our audience? That so if I go back here to the, yeah, great question. If I go back to this slide here, so you can kind of see the three units together. This is the, the three basic options are what you see here, which was a grill cabinet uh, from left to right. In the middle, connecting those right up there uh, next to that grill cabinet is a what we call a corner cabinet. And then next to that is a bar. Uh, the bar and the grill cabinet are the same dimensions. Uh, you're going to get an outside dimension of 32 and a half by 69 and a half uh, on both of those. The corner unit will give you about 32 and a half inches in width uh, outside the outside. Again, being able, you know, we kind of took the most common dimensions that we see um, out in the field and we, you know, married it up with our uh, design here. So for the most part, there is the ability to elongate these, um, you know, in a linear fashion or make that nine degree turn and really get whatever dimension the client is looking for. Uh, so that, that is a great question. There are multiple options to be able to do. Uh, the next slide here is we'll take that same uh, frame uh, that you saw, that L-shaped frame. And now this is a real world uh, installation or, or uh, application here where obviously there is no uh, base work that needs to be done. So whether that's this is being put in the parklet itself or on pedestals, you'll see that all the cuts are being made as they go along. This job is two workers uh, basically putting it together. And as I play it, you'll see that all those panels are pre-constructed. All they're doing is putting bolts in every corner. Uh, they'll connect them to each other. And then again, you can kind of see the one guy is starting to hang panels, again, with almost no cuts. The cutting that you see there is a lot for that uh, bar, or I'm sorry, the grill area where you have some custom doors and a bar type to kind of, uh, to cut in, but you'll see that structure there. Um, that was about an hour and a half install time right there. Uh, so again, something that is very easily and quickly done, um, you know, depending on what you have on site. 
Uh, really quickly here, I just wanted to move on and talk about uh, some of the base constraints. Um, you know, the ability to take away a lot of the weight um, within these structures, we're essentially from one unit, let's say we have a bar unit, we're essentially removing uh, about 4,000 pounds of weight. Uh, now what that does, is that opens up the avenue here for kind of what we're discussing today, which is uh, putting these uh, frames on a pedestal type system, whether that be on grade, uh, in a parking stall situation or on a uh, amenity deck uh, above uh, some sort of rooftop. And you'll see here, we, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Here's an example of one, uh, you know, as Brad attested to it earlier, uh, there is no issue with the weight on these units and those uh, pedestals. You know, it's more the bearing of the roof uh, and what they can handle. But again, we're removing the majority of that weight and, and kind of uh, making these units, you know, once countertop is in place, right around 2,000 pounds. Uh, so, you know, something to kind of keep in mind as you're designing uh, different spaces. Uh, these are will fit um, in some other, other applications. Um, with that being said, one last thing that Bruce and I were talking about earlier, and, and we kind of had this nice discussion in regards to the fact that, you know, obviously no one knows what these times are going to bring. And, and Mike mentioned this earlier, how long this is going to go. You know, there's talk that some of these spaces will be uh, something that would be continued for the next foreseeable future in the next couple of years. Um, but if that isn't the case, uh, this is something that um, we want everyone to realize that can be used uh, in other spaces. Uh, so we do uh, have this system in a parking uh, situation, parklet situation, and that use is no longer needed. You know, this is something, those pillars that I showed you how to construct can easily be used to do any kind of park district uh, sign, any kind of uh, structure that needs uh, signage. Uh, those are, they lend themselves very well to that. The bars and planters can be used in different situations, whether that's in front of buildings to give them an aesthetic pleasing uh, look or just to help uh, kind of accommodate some of these things. So kind of just the idea here is to, yes, use them for now, but also be able to take these and use them in other spaces long term. Uh, so that's kind of the idea there as well. So just something we wanted to throw out there. Um, okay, great job. Brian, I, am, uh, I am done here. Great job, Og. Don't go far, though. First of all, before everyone leaves, and I forgot to announce this in the beginning, we do have a couple of poll questions we'd like to run by you. So if you could take a few minutes and answer those, this is a great, you know, for us, it helps not only assess how we conveyed the information, but if that information is really, you know, is this something that's going to be implemented? How do we want to implement it? There's a lot of good stuff that comes from those. So please take a few minutes to, you know, answer those questions. Augie, one more yes. question for you that just popped up the countertops on the Ucaras yes and the modular units so th there there is a lot of different options and avenues that can be taken with that so that, that is a great question the majority of these uh, units uh, right now are being uh, capped with uh, some sort of granite countertop or monolithic lithic slab uh, what you guys see here and what I'm pointing to here right behind Bruce uh, is basically a coping structure that can be drilled into the bottom and basically adhered to the surface, giving you an interior cavity that's exposed. So there are a, a number of different types of uh, uh, capping options. And again, that's gonna be more relegated to what the client wants, uh, whether they want that uh, with no opening or they want some sort of uh, opening to have uh, for uh, some sort of inter internal structure. So that kind of goes in, in hand in hand with, with some of that. Okay, that's great. And let me see here. And I think that's, you know, in the interest of time, we have about five minutes left. I don't see any other questions popping up. Brad, you made mention that there were a few that you had seen. I don't know if we've got a, there's a little fly in the ointment. Is anyone else gathering any questions that I haven't seen? Yeah, Some and just minor. everyone will see on the screen. Sorry, Brian, not to interrupt, but there yeah. is, uh, there's three polling questions. So we'll kind of shoot those out there as we, we keep talking. Um, and, uh, you know, again, this also helps us to, you know, if there, in case there's any follow-up that, that needs to be done, whether you want to hear more about the pedestals and how those work for other projects you may have, whether that be uh, maybe some of the technologies that Brad went over, or if it's something more along the lines of some of the vertical features that are interesting to you, uh, you know, we can definitely uh, follow up and do more of a one-on-one -on -one type of uh, Zoom meeting and almost a uh, type of presentation to really answer and really drill into those specific uh, questions that everyone might have. So again, definitely uh, feel free to uh, send your questions in um, via the chat or the question and answer. Uh, the other thing too, Brian, that I don't know if we went over, 
Um, but everyone will get a uh, follow-up email that will be generated. It will have the link to this webinar uh, so that everyone can, again, share that with uh, uh, coworkers or if you wanted to see it again. Uh, but we also are going to have some contact information for Brad and Mike uh, in case you do want to set anything up uh, in that regard. And a couple of other questions, uh, more follow-up questions uh, that if you guys would take the time just to maybe respond back, it won't be too long. But again, it helps us put together some uh, content that is usable and relevant to what everyone's looking for. And feel free to add in any other uh, tidbits in those emails when responding. Uh, we're more than happy to hear uh, any kind of feedback. Okay, great job, Og. Thank you very much. I just wanted to take this time to thank all of our participants. I know we're very busy right now. It's not always easy to carve out an hour of the day, but I, I'd like to think you got an awful lot out of this. We are very excited about the Parklet Initiative. We see a great future for this. It's very universal. Uh, this is going to be implemented in so many different scenarios. Uh, if you have any questions in the interim, um, please, we have your email address. We'll follow up with you, but you can contact, it, uh, contact us at any time. And please go on our website. Take advantage of a lot of these online resources that we have. Because obviously with, you know, with the inception of COVID, times are changing and we want to make this a tremendously useful resource. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.